Okay, so if you're using Google Sheets and you want to lock out certain cells based on the values of other cells, um, so you want to prevent people from being able to use a cell. So for example, let's say here, uh, D3. You don't want someone to be able to put a value in there unless C3 says shipped. So we'll talk about what that means and go through how to do it here. And we'll go through a couple of different examples. And then we're also going to talk about whether or not this is even the best way to do it. So we'll use some alternatives to get to the point what we're trying to get with uh, locking out the cells. Uh, but let's get started. So what we're going to do in this case is uh, this is a shipping log and these are different items and they're either shipped or they're out of stock. So they haven't shipped yet. They're pending. So they're getting ready to ship or there's just no data on them yet. And we're going to act like your job is to go in and add the tracking number for now. Next example, we'll be adding uh, data in both of these columns. But once it's shipped, you go in here and you add the tracking number. But what's been happening is that people have been putting in the tracking number in something that's not shipped. So it's just a simple data entry mistake and you're wanting to limit that. So right now, this item um, that was ordered on 423 isn't shipped yet because it's out of stock. But if I accidentally go in and enter a tracking number, Google Sheets accepts that, right? But we can turn that off. So let's go, let's delete that right now. And the first thing that we want to do, we want to tell Google Sheets what range that we want to put this limitation on. So select the range. In this case, it's D2 to D17. And we'll go to data and then data validation. So data validation is what we're going to be using to drive these rules. And when you look at the box in data validation, there's a drop down that says criteria. So it's asking, okay, I'm going to control what can go in some of these cells. How do you want me to do it? And I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you exactly how, because we're going to do a custom formula. And when you change the custom formula is in gray text there, it has a little formula and it starts with an equal sign. Just use that as a hint and it's showing you just type a formula in there, just like you're in a cell. So you use the equal sign and we're going to look at column C, right? And if it says shipped, then it's okay. Then it's valid. So data validation will pass. Um, so uh, it's just going to be equals and then C2. is equal to, and we'll use quotes because this is an exact string of characters and we'll say shipped. And if you look at the next line, what it was going, what it's set up to do is to show a warning. We'll change that to reject input. And one of the things to pay attention to here is this is an entire range, right? But you write the cell as if you're in D2 because that's the uh, value in the top left of the range that we're applying this to. So that's important to understanding how to write that formula. Let's click on save and we've applied the data validation. So let's try it. If this thing is out of stock, but you accidentally try to type in a tracking number and hit enter, it doesn't let you, All right? So that's the basics of what we're trying to do here is Google Sheets is saying, nope, can't do that. And that's because of the data validation we just applied. And so let's move on to our second example, which is just applying this to a range of data. You could very easily see yourself doing that. In this case, you're in charge of putting in the tracking number and the shipping service, right? But they're both based on column C. So let's go to data, data validation, remove validation first so we don't have overlapping rules. And then we'll go back to data validation cell range is already selected. We want to do a custom formula again, and it's going to be a very similar formula, but we're going to make a little change. And this will help it look at column C when it's evaluating what we do with column D and E. All right, so here we go. The custom formula is still looking at C2, but we're going to fix column C. And if you think that we're, we're going to say, just let me finish it first. C2 is equal to shipping. And what happens here, let's say you're in D2, it's going to look at C2. 
But when you're in E2, where the shipping service is, it's still going to look at C2. Mm. The letter won't shift because you fixed it with a dollar sign. So that's how you apply this to multiple columns. We'll reject the input again, click Save, and then we'll try to enter something into, let's say, E3. And let's ship it via UPS this time. Can't do it. All right, so that's applying data validation to several columns. And let's click OK. And then we'll do one more here before we talk about the alternatives to decide if this is even the right way to do it. Uh, what I created here is just a spreadsheet. And we're going to be looking at one value that's not going to move around. So we want to open and close data entry for this entire range based on what this dropdown value is. So I've selected everything. Let's go to data validation. And in this case, we're going to do a custom formula is, again, and we'll say equal. And we're going to fix the column, column E, and we'll fix the row. So that's the trick here. So E2 is equal to, if it's equal to open, then we pass the data validation and you can use the sheet. Otherwise, reject the input. So we'll click save. And right now it's closed. So you see even these pre-existing values are getting warnings. So you can't put anything in any of the other cells until you go up and you change this drop down to open. And then you can fire away and do whatever you want. So that's how to protect an entire range based on one cell. And this is just data validation here also. So these drop downs, you can get those into a cell. Um, but we won't go into that too much because that's not really the point of this video. I'll link to another video on how to do drop downs, but you could also have this effect by just typing in open or closed. Now there's two considerations to talk about here. And one is that this is not really a security measure. Okay, so you can't use this to count on locking someone else out of a cell and they couldn't change anything um, because all they could do is just go to data and remove the data validation themselves. So this is more of an operational consideration where it could help you be more accurate, but don't rely on it to actually lock out cells from other people. If you need to do that, you can right click and do um, protect range, and then you select the cells or the worksheets that you want to protect from someone, but that can't be conditional. So that's not set up where you can use a formula and lock it out only part of the time. And the other consideration we want to talk about is just, is this the best option, the way to do this? So it may be, but another way to do this, there's the two ways that just come to mind. One would be just to sort by the shipping status. So let's left click on this drop down, short, sort sheet A to Z, but I don't want to accidentally sort that header. Let me try it. Yeah would be just select this table, go to data, and you could just sort the range. Let's say it has a header row, so it doesn't sort the header, sort it by shipping status. And then just everything's grouped together and you can just enter the shipped all at one time because you know um, that only these items that are together uh, should be entered. Or it, probably even better way to do it would be to apply filter right and drop down the filter and shipping status and only show so uncheck the others only show shipped and then you could enter the data here and then turn the filter off just select all of them left click okay so depending on what you're trying to do just filtering and entering the data or sorting may be faster and easier but if you're looking to lock out the cells, now you know how to do it using data validation. All right, and if you like that video, if you subscribe to this channel, you'll see other videos mostly like this. They're just little tips and tricks for Google Sheets. So um, thanks for watching, and uh, if you like it, please subscribe.